Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Grumman Pilot's YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be talking about the wet compass and the repair kit. Now, this is an economy compass seal kit that you can buy from Aircraft Spruce, and we're going to be installing it. Well, no, actually, we're going to be showing where it goes and the pieces that come with it for a wet compass. So stay tuned while we have some more fun. So we would like to ask you, please subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the notify to stay current with our content. Now, what would any kind of repair kit be like if you didn't have some sort of instructions? So in the compass repair kit, you get a cork diaphragm, you get a black and a tan diaphragm, and you get a set of instructions that you can use. And to go ahead and take it apart, and we will be using those instructions as we go to disassemble an old compass that we have. And you'll see how problematic can be. And first off, let me just say that when it comes to magnetic compasses, they are best left to an instrument shop. Your A&P can't do it. You sure can't do it. But an instrument shop can. So think about that before you send one off or try to do it yourself. Now in this compass repair kit that we got from Aircraft Spruce, and this is the economy one, you get a shelf life tag on there. So this expires in 2031. You get a cork gasket, goes between the glass and the outside, rubber between the glass and the inside, a compass correction card, because you're going to be disturbing things when you play with it, and that's the back diaphragm gasket for the back of the compass. So these are all the pieces that come in the compass economy repair kit from Aircraft Spruce, and it's about eight or nine dollars and does not include the highly refined kerosene that you use so now here we are we've got our camera set up for the disassembly of a compass now as you can see this is a magnetic compass it's a bit old it's a bit used we're going to show you where these pieces go in it as well as look at the condition of it and as you can see the glass is pretty cloudy on the front of this old magnetic compass or a wet compass and because it is a wet compass, it is greatly affected by anything magnetic moving around the table. Me, uh, it's a titanium chair, but the screwdriver is metal as well as some other bits. But anyway, the magnetic compass. Now it does have a fill on the top, a cloudy glass, and as you can see, it's just your standard wet compass. And we're going to be applying the kit that we got from Aircraft Spruce to it. Now you can also order the kerosene from aircraft spruce and you can get that as well and one bottle of kerosene um, is more than enough to do a couple of compasses as well as top off your entire eaa chapter but anyway here we are opening everything up and getting everything out now this is a bracket that holds your compass to the top of the windshield bow and i'm amused by that because when I bought my Traveler, my compass was in the panel right underneath the big 8 ohm speaker for listening to the radios. And every time the speaker worked, the compass would swing. So I ended up going to Fletch Air, my first purchase ever, and buying this piece of metal like this so that I could mount my compass from out of the panel and put something else in there like an EGT probe and put the compass up on the windshield bow. So... That was my first purchase from Fletch Air many, many years ago, back in 91 when I got my Traveler. And you can still get those parts today, and you can still move your compass up if you don't want to have a vertical card compass or something else. But anyway, now we're going to continue with the disassembly of this compass. And to do that, facilitate it, we're actually going to open up the instruction panel, and we're going to get the instructions out of it and take a look at them. And if I know me, I'm going to lay out all the bits and pieces. You're just watching me right here um, fight with the scotch tape that I had used to reseal the package so that the bits wouldn't fly out when it was carried out to the airport. But anyway, there's the bag. Static is holding in the uh, compass correction card. We're going to have to reach in and retrieve it the hard way. But again, they include the compass correction card because you're going to be rebuilding it and you're going to be messing up the compass and they want you to be able to reswing it when you're all done and have a new card so that your aircraft records match what's actually going on with the aircraft. By the way, the Grumman Pilots Association on our GPA website, we have this card as available as a downloadable, correctly sized, scaled and shaded fonted um, card that you can print on your printer and 
pull them out. Now there's the cork gasket, there's the rubber that goes between the glass and the inside of the compass, and then there's the back diaphragm seal that goes on the back, and that's held in by those four screws, and that hole there is for venting the atmospheric pressure so the diaphragm can compensate um, as you go up in altitude, and the compass will continue to work as you think it's supposed to work. But anyway, so now let's take the instructions and we're going to look at what they say and we're going to grab a screw tip and we are going to begin the disassembly process. So here we go with some fun. Now, the compass also had a screw in the front. Now that's a 832 black anodized aluminum screw because you want aluminum or brass because you don't want to affect the compass and that was for holding it in the panel with the keeper in the back. We remove that now so now you can see all the dust and the debris that we're going to have to clean up on this compass. But anyway that's the first step was to get all the external bits out. Now according to the instructions we want to take out the four screws on the back of the compass and we are going to do that. We're just going to do that by hand and as we do that we can actually feel the gasket start to release underneath. Now I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through me taking all the screws out because you don't need to be seeing all of that but uh, stay tuned I'll be back in just a minute with a little bit more fun for you. And I fast forwarded me with not getting the back of the diaphragm cover off the compass. That's a little more complicated. It was stuck on there really good. I ended up having to grab a ceramic tool uh, to get in between it and the back and get it pried off. And then once I did that, it just pops right down. And there is the diaphragm, which holds all the refined kerosene inside the compass so it can float and it reduces the amount of wiggle that the compass will have. So there's the oil gasket coming off. Now that we have the back off, we can want to move around and we want to look at taking the screws off the front. But again, it's just those four little screws coming out. We put them in the right orientation and kept them to make sure that they were all the same size. There wasn't any odd shaped screw. And again, those screws are made out of aluminum so that they don't affect the magnetic compass. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be disassembling the front of the compass and we're going to be covering up the set screws for north and south, east and west. We're going to be removing that cover completely off, exposing the screws, and then we're going to take out the locking screw, not the pivot screw. So we all have all that out. And now we can attack the four screws that are in the front, and I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through all of that for you. And then once the front is removed, we're now able to try to remove the glass. And this is going to prove more problematic than we thought. That glass is very fragile. It's easy to chip. It's even easier to crack. Don't ask me how I know that, folks. But anyway, that's why it's best left to an instrument shop. And there's no way to really push it out from the backside. And it was really wedged in there with the seam and I had to get around to the back but here it is all open and closed so you can see where there was no glass and how clean everything is so ladies and gentlemen this is what the inside of your compass looks like and those are all the little bits and rubber pieces that have come out and we're going to go ahead and reassemble it and take it back to the hanger we're going to leave this one without the glass on the shelf so we can show people what the internals look like but again ladies and gentlemen we hope you found all this useful and informative and as you just saw right there how sensitive that magnetic compass is to something metal like the screwdriver so again we hope you found all this useful and informative thank you so much for watching and have a great day flying your grumman so here are the cute kittens all being quiet on the sofa on this nice cold day thought you'd enjoy it so take a look at these little beauties they're eight and ten months old each